Thanks for joining us here at uh, the Resurrectionist Sisters uh, headquarters. Uh, we have with us uh, Mother Teresa Maria and Sister Gia Marie. Jean Marie. Gia Marie. Jean. Jean Marie. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, uh, they're joining us here uh, for this uh, short interview. Uh, um, I'm just wondering, uh, sisters, uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how um, you came to, to be in existence? Well, we were founded in Rome in 1891, and our relationship, our roots with the Resurrection Fathers has been that uh, Father Peter Semenenko, a Resurrectionist, was the spiritual director of our foundress, Mother Celine, who is now Blessed Celine, because she was beatified a few years ago, and uh, she imbibed his spirit, his love for the resurrection and what resurrection spirituality stands for. And she founded the female branch of the Congregation of the Resurrection here in Rome in 1891. Wow, and where are you located throughout the world? Well, we're in the United States, Canada, England, Australia, um, in Argentina, Tanzania, and in the United States we have two provinces. That means two different geographical areas. One which is centered in Chicago and the other in New York. Wow, and uh, you know, we would share the same charism of bringing right. uh, the hope of Christ's resurrection uh, into various places in the world uh, where people are in despair. Now, are there places uh, or ministries that uh, you're known for, for uh, taking on and, and being involved with? Well, right now, our, you know, we have this great thrust for missionary uh, activity in Tanzania, but our staple, really, apostolates, I'm talking about the states now because that's what I'm most familiar with. We have been in hospital ministry, we had a resurrection hospital, the whole healthcare center, center uh, corporation in Chicago, and then in the east, it was primarily in schools. But as you know, as schools close, we go to other apostolates pastoral ministry in parishes, or um, visiting the sick, or various other kinds of ministries once we no longer have the possibility of a school. Wonderful. And uh, Mother General, if I could uh, ask you, uh, what, are, what are some of the things that you like about um, being a sister of the Resurrection? So, Mother is, uh, her greatest joy is the fact that we live a certain spirit of the resurrection whereby we can share this spirit with people because it's a need of the world today for hope and uh, joy. Uh, at the same time, Christ living in us, who is our new life. In other words, Mother is stressing the idea of the new life in us and in the world that we got called to do. Okay, uh, and um, for uh, young people who are looking to make a difference in the world, what would she say to them? I powiedzieć Panu Jezusowi, który jest w was, że go kochacie, że w niego wierzycie, a on będzie was słuchał i da wam tę radość. So Mother says the first thing she would counsel them is to find a quiet place and look into their own hearts. What is Jesus trying to tell them? Because he really is, uh, and he really loves. So he'll be there for us wow. if we open up to him. Wow. And then go to others and tell them the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank okay. you so much for doing the interview. Thank you. Thank you for the warm welcome, Sister Jean Maria. And um, I was just wondering if you could explain um, the uh, hospitality that you've offered me and, and the significance of that. Well, today is, you know, now we're celebrating the week before Ash Wednesday, and everybody knows Mardi Gras, mm -hmm. but in different countries they perhaps 
celebrated on a different day. Like I remember in the States, it was Fat Tuesday. Mm -hmm. It was the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday where people went to town in celebrations. Are you from the United States? I'm from New York. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Got the accent. Yeah. Okay. Even though I've lost the accent. <laughs> it's still there, just a little bit. <laughs> okay. But here in Italy, it's the Thursday before. It's their Fat Thursday. So, for example, today in our school, the children have their Mardi Gras party. Uh, no, no lessons, they're just prancing around according to music. And uh, when we heard that Father Toby was coming, the sisters this morning had baked some specialties that are part of the Polish tradition before, uh, uh, before Lent. So these are what they call punch keys. Uh, they're, they're really jelly donuts. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as much jelly as our jelly donuts, our Bismarck's in the States. Right. But uh, there's a special dough that they have at this time of year, so we'd like to treat Father that he's come to our house oh, thank with you very the tradition. Much, Gia. Yes. Well, why don't we sit down and enjoy some of these and uh, perhaps take a little bit of a tour of uh, the sure. chapel, maybe? Thank Gladly. you. Okay, thank you. Pleasure to have you. Well, we're just going to get a tour then of the chapel, I think, and um, we're going to. Uh, See some. I believe you have a relic in here of Sister Selena, your yes. foundress. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the life of Sister Selena? Sure. This chapel was is just a few years old, the way it is now. The chapel was here with the picture. But uh, since the beatification of our foundress, we built this commemorative chapel to commemorate mm -hmm. the beatification. And uh, it's very really symbolic because her body isn't here, but she's with us because we have her relic here. And mm -hmm. it's over here on this column. This is a relic of our foundress. And to be perfectly exact, like Americans like exactness, it's taken from her hand. Okay. Okay, because uh, we, it, it's, the, it's her presence, and we feel her presence among us. What's interesting about this chapel is this painting. Um, this painting, you see, our foundress had a daughter, Hedwig, who, who became the co-foundress. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Hedwig decided that she was going to join her mother in the religious life, at that time, Father Peter Semenenko, on the third anniversary of her decision, together with our foundress, offered Hedwig this picture. Mm -hmm. This picture was painted in 1884, uh, the Annunciation, and it was given uh, to Hedwig when she gave her fiat, or so be it, I will be a religious. Now, Sister, there's uh, some people out there who would be wondering, uh, how is it possible that a, f a foundress uh, had a child who then later became part of the community? Because it's, it's not uh, that common in Canada. No, it's not, not common, but the fact is a widow can become a religious. Mm. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to be young. Uh, you can be middle-aged. Um, you can be, you can have, as long as your children are already of an age where they can take care of themselves. You don't leave your kids behind, you go run away to the convent. Mm -hmm. But such vocations are possible in the church. And we've had some in our own congregation. I guess mother inspired them. Well, anyway, mother was in her 50s when she founded the congregation. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had two daughters. The younger daughter joined her as the co-founders of the congregation. Okay. While the other daughter got married and mm -hmm. had a nice family and uh, with uh, three, four children. I just heard some, uh, some children in the background. <laughs> you mentioned children before. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was wondering, is, is the school then really close by? To... Yes, it's, it's attached. It's part of the building. Okay. We have a school here, and that was a tradition of um, education which was founded by Mother Celine. Because before she bought the property and, the house, and built the house here on, on uh, Mark Antonio, we lived in uh, various, uh, various other addresses in Rome, but wherever she was, part of the apartment became a school, and at that time it was geared toward the poor girls of Rome. Would you mind if we take a quick, a quick peek into the sure. school? Sure. So we're just entering the School of the Resurrection and Sisters. Yeah. And today it's a mess. <laughs> today it's a mess because this is the kindergarten. They're having a party. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. 
Go in here or no? In palestra. They're downstairs in the gym, the kids. Oh, okay. They clean up. Okay, can I just do a quick... Uh... Oh, <laughs> oh, <they're playing. laughs> it's so bright and cheerful in here with all these decorations. And that's part of the uh, the Shrove uh, Thursday, <laughs> I guess, that they're having here. Yep. Yeah. Today nobody's We're entering the principal's office. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> Yeah. Am I in trouble, sister? No, Did I do no, something wrong? No, I just want, I said, you just want to see, take some pictures of the class. Oh, okay, thank okay. you. And just ask her what she enjoys most about her ministry. Her greatest joy is that she can be with children. Yeah. They bring joy and freshness to life. Bonjour. Bonjour. Mother's going to say goodbye. Oh, okay. Goodbye. Oh, thank, thank you. Very much. Thank you so much, Mother General. I'm very glad to see you and meet Come you. back again for a longer time. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>